Painting flowers and leaves has to be one of my favorite things. So in today's tutorial, we're going to talk paints and I'm also going to show you how I paint different leaves in watercolor. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you a bunch of different leaf painting designs that I use when I'm painting in watercolor. Now I am going to ramble on for a few minutes about paint and this and that. So I will put the time when the actual tutorial starts in the description if you just want to skip over this. So anyways, what I wanted to talk to you guys about was supplies. So recently I did a large commission piece for a family friend that's getting married and I had to go out and buy some Windsor and Newton watercolors because I wanted to have paints that are light fast and permanent as permanent as watercolors can be and I'm a big proponent on the channel of working with the supplies that you can get your hands on and if that means going to the dollar store and buying a praying set then I think you should do that if I had to sum up my channel in five words it's art and creativity as play or art for everybody and I really believe that you don't need fancy supplies or I really believe that you don't need a, an education in fine arts to enjoy being creative. So that's what I'm sort of all about and I'm sure you guys get that. This, what we always say on the channel is perfectly imperfect and you know that's just really what I'm all about. But when you start selling your work or you're giving something to someone for their wedding and you want it to last forever, that's when you kind of need to get those more you know, high-end supplies so that you can be sure that they're not gonna fade, the colors aren't gonna fade over time. And so recently I went and I bought these Windsor & Newton watercolors and what I kind of wanted to share with you guys wasn't just that this experience of yes, you get you know high-end supplies once you're selling your work, but I kind of was like, when I started painting with the paints, was like, whoa, this looks really good. And you know, so once you're at the point where you've, you're feeling confident and you are ready to go out and spend that money, I would say what I learned this past uh, month was that, you know, better supplies sometimes equals a better painting, especially once you've built up the skill. So I'm really excited about my new paints and that's what I'm gonna be using in today's tutorial. I still love all my other watercolor sets, but I really was amazed at the color I got with the Windsor & Newton tubes, the paste paint, and just the way that the paint sort of seeped into the page really beautifully. And this was, I was using the techniques that I use when painting, but the effect that I achieved was just really good. So I had to sort of chalk it up and say, oh, better paint equals, wow, like a kind of a better result. And when I learned, I've mentioned this little antidote on the channel before, but when I started drawing, I was very young and my parents encouraged my hobby, but they didn't really know anything about art. So I would do pencil sketches like portraits using computer paper and an HB pencil. And it wasn't until I got to high school and realized, whoa, there is way more than one pencil. There's, you know, the H range, which is from hard to very hard, and the B range, which is from soft to very, very soft and blendable. And then of course HB is that middle pencil where they meet. That's the one you, you have when you're a kid. Um, so it was great. I already had the skills of sketching. And then once I was given the extra tools, I was like, whoa, now I can go so far with these new tools. And that's kind of what I experienced this month with the Windsor and Newton paints. Just I've got the skill that I'm happy with. And now I've got these more expensive supplies, but I'm just amazed at what my skill plus good supplies can achieve. So I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys. And now let's get into our leaf painting. I'm gonna share all my favorite designs and we're gonna use my new watercolors. So let's get started. So to start here, I'm using some cold pressed watercolor paper from Canson, as well as some Windsor & Newton watercolor paints. Now these are the Cotman watercolors and that's sort of Windsor & Newton's entry level range, but still good quality, very good quality. And then I have a number eight round brush and I'm laying a little bit of the watercolor paint onto the palette. I have first a sap green, which is sort of a warmer mossy green. And then I have a darker cooler green, which is hooker's green. And I'm also adding a bit of Prussian 
tin blue to the palette so that I can cool my greens down even further if I want to. If you really love warm greens, you might put a little bit of yellow on your palette. And then you can see I'm adding a lot of water to my paints and I'm mixing a bit of the hooker's green and the sap green together to give me this nice medium green. I want to make sure to blot my brush. You want lots of paint to be held in the body or the belly of your brush, but you don't want so much water and paint on there that you can't control the paint when it hits the page. And the first leaf design that we're starting with is very delicate, so that's important. You can see here what I'm doing is I'm painting these little stems and then I just draw these tiny little oval shaped or round pairs of leaves going all the way down the stem. And then the trick to creating this image is just that I keep adding stems. So you can see I've got three little stems there with the pairs of leaves and then I'm gonna add another one. And this is great for filling in areas of a painting because you can kind of make it any shape shape and size that you want. You can see you could sort of just keep going, keep branching out, keep adding those stems. And this plant could become any shape and size that you want it to. And as I go down the length of the plant here, I sometimes change the color of the green just ever so slightly, or I'll let my paint naturally sort of become a little translucent as I mix in a little more water. And in that way, I get a beautiful variance that I think looks really natural and beautiful. And it also adds a sort of interest to my painting. Okay, and then with that one done, we're gonna move on and I'm gonna show you what is probably my favorite leaf to paint and I'm mixing in some more hookers green. So you can see I've got a bit of a cooler green on my palette, still adding lots of water, still making sure to blot my brush on the paper towel. And this one, you really use the belly of the brush and you just drag the paintbrush across the page to create this leaf shape. And then you sort of use the tip of the brush, the point of the brush to finish off that leaf shape and make it a little more pointy, a little more more delicate. So you drag the brush, the belly of the brush, you let the paint and water sort of sploosh out and then you can just finish off and make it even a little more leaf-like using the tip of the brush and drag using that dragging motion putting the belly of the brush right onto the page with all its paint and water held within it. Um, it really gives you a nice variance of color within the leaf and you can see how the paint sort of just sits and especially as that continues to dry, it'll really give a really beautiful, that's when you get that really nice watercolor look I find where part of the leaf is really dark and part of it's very translucent and it is that sort of perfectly imperfect look that's, um, that's what I think we're going for here. And you can add a little paint as I'm doing here, or you can also use a dry brush to take away a little bit of paint. So sop up a little paint. And in that way you get a little nice variance too. And you can really see that there. So before we move on to the next leaf, what I'm doing is adding a little bit of Prussian blue to my green and that's just to really cool it down and also to create a third color of green. If I'm doing five different leaf designs on the page, I at least wanna have three different colors or shades of green so that I create a nice, um, nice design, you know, a nice colorful piece with differences and variants. And for this one, this is sort of what I call my cedar. And to achieve the look of the cedar, I do a main branch with little stems coming off of it. And then each stem gets all this sort of dots and stippling that I think looks like that sort of lacy evergreen that the cedar is. And I'm gonna do this one again, but um, so you can really see, but for this little one, I'm just sort of weaving it into the other leaves here. So let's start again. So to begin, I'm doing this sort of stippling, but I, I actually wanted to show you, okay, so here's the shape. We'll start with one, stem or branch and then it's got all these other little stems coming out off of it so you need to think about the shape and then I go in and I do my little stippling and just lightly add this nice watery paint this is quite wet paint that I'm adding here and you want that negative space um, you want the white of the page to show through and then you can see it just dries really nicely and it gives this this really nice look and this is also really nice for filling in if you are doing a wreath or some design where you're using a bunch of different leaves because it's, um, it's very different than the other delicate leaves. 
So next what I'm doing is just adding a another sort of a variation of that first leaf that we did and it's just the leaves are a little bit wider, a little bit closer together, the paint's a little more translucent so I'm doing things that are sort of the same but sort of different. Simply adding a little more water to your paint can give you a shade that's just so light and it looks great with the other paints that are a little more colorful and opaque so again just thinking about differences within the piece will help you to create a design that's beautiful and cohesive. Okay, so now we have these nice cool colors in the front. We've got a lot of cool colors down in the bottom of the piece. So now I've mixed up a much warmer green, mostly just using the sap green. And I'm gonna do my next design. And this one is really fun to paint. I always think of this as painting like a school of fish, except the fish are leaves. <laughs> so they're just sort of these um, like very almond shapes or eye shaped leaves there. They're basically pointy ovals and they're all in a cluster. Anyway, you can make them any shape. Um, and I, again, like a school of fish, I just paint a whole bunch very close together, sort of going off in different directions. And then while they're still wet, I add these lines down the middle to sort of represent um, the veining on the leaves and the lines connect them all together. I'm going back in here and adding some more translucent ones around the edge. So I've just added a little extra water to the paint. And um, that one, yeah, again, it's just really fun to paint and they always seem to turn out well. And they're good for filling in space too. So next we're going to do a bit more pine. This is more of like a pine tree pine and I always just start with the stem and you might have two stems that are sort of connected. I'm just going to change the trajectory of that a little. So I've got my two stems and then I'm ready to add the needles and this is really fun. You just want to add these you know nice simple light brush strokes. You could do this with very wet paint and let the needles bleed together. You could do this with very dry paint and almost dry brush the leaves on. So that's all about playing around with your your watercolor techniques but either way no matter how you choose to do it I usually go back in while it's still fairly wet and add a, a little bit of a darker shade um, and then maybe I'll go back in once it's dry and add even more detail and I'm going along here now and just adding um, more leaves that one I showed you second that one where you're dragging the belly of the brush across the page that's a favorite um, and so I just love doing it and that's what you see here and and that brush technique, once you can kind of let go and allow yourself to just say, I'm not worried about the shape, I'm just gonna see what happens when I drag the belly of the brush across the page, and then know that you can kind of play around with it by using the tip of the brush later on to create those points. It's, um, it's really fun, and I think you'll see that it's a, a really great way to paint leaves that look perfectly imperfect and have that nice watercolor look. And now that my piece is coming together, I'm just going in and adding some leaf designs that are really the same, but just different sizes. So now I'm adding some tiny leaves. And that's, again, think about that. You wanna have different shapes of leaves, different colors, different translucencies. Yeah, so some that are more translucent, some that are more opaque, and then different sizes. So they could be this, all the same shape, um, but make some sm small and some big. Um, so size, shape of the leaves, the colors, and then the um, transparency. All of those things you can play around with and work with and use to your advantage to create a really interesting and beautiful piece. So if all you've got down is two different shapes of leaves, hey, that's okay. Pick some different colors and some um, add some extra water and you're gonna create something really beautiful. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it a little bit helpful. I'm definitely still always experimenting with my paints and my supplies. Um, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next week with a new tutorial.